Hi there, welcome to this video on test driven development. Uh, in the first video, we have looked at the theory behind test driven development. Uh, in this video, let's look at our example for test driven development. Let's get started. Okay. Uh, the problem that we are going to solve with test driven development is uh, I want to create, uh, we are going to solve two problems. Uh, the second one we will take in the next video. We will start with the first problem. I want to uh, given a string, I want to swap the last two characters of the string. So basically, if you look at this particular string, a set of examples, if I get A, B as input, I want, since the last two characters are A and B, I want to get B A as output. And if I get rain as input, uh, I want to swap the last two characters, uh, which are I and N, I want to swap them, and I want to get N and I as the output. So, uh, how do we test driven development to get this working? So, first thing I would want to prepare is actually a list of conditions I can start with. I think whatever I have here serves very well as the list of conditions. And uh, I actually would like to start off with something uh, a simple condition which represents the business logic of the method. Uh, here there are different schools of thought. Some people say you have to start with the simple condition. So empty would be the simplest condition to start with. But actually I prefer starting with some condition which actually represents the business logic of this method. This business logic of the method is to swap two characters of the string. And I think uh, swapping two characters of the string is perfectly represented in here. So or I can even start with AB is equal to BA because here also I have to swap two characters. So probably we'll start with AB is equal to BA. So let's write the test for it first. So uh, let's now create the test class. So first thing I would do is to create a test case. So J in a test case and I would create it in the test folder obviously source slash test slash java and I would want to create this in com.retools.string uh, I would call this class a string helper and I don't need anything else I guess let's create the test uh, we have a test which if I run this test right now you would see that it fails that's good so it's actually test ah, come on it should have been string helper test so that's good uh, now what we want to test is the first condition which is uh, for two character string, uh, it's working fine. So let's probably name something of that kind. Test str with uh, two cars uh, is completely reversed. So it's reversed. So uh, now let's write that example. Uh, I want to create string helper class helper is equal to new string helper so i'm creating an instance of the class which i want the class doesn't exist but we are thinking actually from the perspective of if the code exists that's how we would do it so and then we want to call a method on swap last two characters last two cars and i want to pass in an input uh, of a B and the output I want from that method is B A. So this is a test, this is a very simple test to write. So it equals B A and A. So I think this is a good test to start with for this example. If I pass in B A, I should get an output A B. So let's get started now. Uh, yeah, obviously there's a compilation error because the class doesn't exist. Let's go ahead and create the class. So I'm going to create the class. Uh, I would create the source in a different folder than the test. I would usually create it in main Java. So source main Java is where my source resides. It's in a different folder from the test because I would want the test and the source to be separated. When I give something to production, it will only contain the uh, source code. It wouldn't contain the test code, but test code is more to ensure that our code is running fine. So we use different folders for source and the test. Uh, the next thing that we would uh, need to concentrate on is I think 
everything else is fine so i'll just go ahead and create the string helper class there you go now we have the string helper class created uh, the next thing i want to do is actually go and create the method so create the method so i have two last two characters string uh, i would want it to be the same and i just put str so now uh, if i run the test right now if you look at it string helper test run jane test okay it would obviously fail because the uh, method uh, like we have not coded anything yet so now let's go ahead and see what's needed to reverse the character of the string so the input is str and i want ab to return ba so one of the things i can do is just get the two characters and reverse them so i'll start off with that so i'll say string uh, char first character is equal to str dot char at zero so that basically gives me the uh, character first character and second character is str dot char at one so that's my piece of code and then i can do return second char because i have to reverse it i'm going to reverse it myself and do second char plus first char so i think this is simplest one obviously i can append two characters so let me just put a empty string to get it working and let's see if it, this works okay that's perfect so you have your first uh, working uh, piece of code with Tesla on development that's a great deal of success uh, next step is to look at the refactor uh, is there something that I would want to refactor in here? Right now, I don't see anything that's uh, easily refactorable. Is there something I need to improve? Probably, I think the empty string appending it probably might be a smell. Let's wait for the next condition and see what happens there. Uh, let's create another test. Uh, I want to test string with actually. Uh, now let's take uh, with. Uh, a string with four characters let's say is properly so let's try with four characters uh, a b uh, and c d let's say the expected output here would be a b and b c because i have to reverse the last two characters so now uh, let's run the test okay the second test fails obviously as expected so let's now try to get that working so uh, one important thing which we didn't take into consideration is actually we hard coded 0 and 1 so that's why uh, there's a problem actually uh, we want to swap the last two characters so let's actually uh, get the length of the string into a variable length is equal to str dot length and the, this should be the second last cap I want to find the second last character of this string which should be at uh, caret length minus 2 and this should be the last character of the string so let me just go ahead and refactor that I want to find the last character of the string which is the caret length minus 1 Okay, that's good. So I want to do the first, first the last character and then the second last character. And then I can actually now get the rest of the string at the start of the thing. So if I get uh, string str minus last two cars, um, that would be str dot substring of zero, comma, I want to get length minus two characters. So that's basically what I want, I guess, right? Okay, and then instead of this empty string, now I can put this in. So, mm, okay, I think this is good. Uh, we have uh, like the last character, second last character reversed and the first part of the string left as it is. So let's see if this test works. Okay, that's perfect, it works. So that's good uh, we have a working piece of code uh, now let's look at refactoring 
uh, I think let's first look at the test. Uh, you can see that the string helper object is created twice. There's a duplication about it. So I'll just remove that out into a separate uh, at the start of the method. And over here, uh, is there anything that I would want to include? I think this is good enough. Uh, I think all the variables are named properly and I think this is understandable as well. So that's good. So now let's pass in uh, something with a bigger number of characters, probably just something with 10 characters. See if it works. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J as the input. I would want J, I as the output. Let's run the test. Oops, this A, B, B, C here, so let's run it down. Okay, that's good. So you have, now you're working, this is working for this condition. Um, the other conditions I think we would need to handle are, uh, if we look at the untitled thing, uh, are empty string and string with one character. So let's see what happens if I pass a string with just one character to this, string with one char. Uh, I should get the same string as the output. So let's try to run because there's one character. The same. Okay. It's failing with a string out of bound exception. Okay. I think uh, it would be failing uh, with, yeah, obviously. Substring would have thrown an exception because the string length is one and I'm doing subtract of minus two. So uh, what we can do here, I think the simplest thing to get this working. Uh, would be to just check the length here. If length is less than 2, I can actually return this string back as it is. Right. If length is 1, I can, yeah. So let's just run this test and check whether it's working. That's good. Uh, I think the last only test that is remaining would be to uh, test str with 0 cast. So now let's pass in an empty string and we would get an empty output. I think that condition is already handled. Let's even run the test and check whether it's fine. Okay, that's good. So now we use test driven development to get this particular functionality working. And that ends our first example for test driven development. Uh, I think we are creating more videos as we speak. And if you want to stay updated, don't forget to click the subscribe button. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and feel free to share this video. Thanks for watching. Until next time.